Welcome to Le Rendez-vous. My name is Garros Doré and I'm a writer with many stories, gossips, ideas, theories and points of views to share about the world we live in. I wanted to create this special moment to talk about all the things that are going on in our lives. So come, let's spend a moment together. Le Rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré, the skincare line I co-created wanting to bring more simplicity and efficacy to our lives. Check out the end of the episode for a special code just for you, the Rendezvous listeners. This is part four, Los Angeles to London. Oh, I loved my first months in LA. The weather, of course, the quietness around, all the dreams that I had brought there, the love and hopes that I was bringing with me, the ocean, the sunshine, our little dog, looking for houses. There was something there that was so different and so exciting and so new. You might be wondering why I chose LA. It's true that, as my ex-boyfriend had said, there was no one to take photos of on the streets of LA. But by that time, I wasn't doing so much street style anymore. The street style photography had led me to become more of a fashion photographer. It had led me to traveling a lot. And I realized pretty soon that the photographer lifestyle, as beautiful as it was, truly wasn't for me. So... It was one of the first things that I had dropped before even leaving New York. I had dreamed of LA, I think because in part it was very trendy and I got caught in that dream. I also was exhausted from my life in New York and I needed a place to land. I loved my life in America and that was the only place where I could see something happening. I had decided against moving upstate. I thought, you're going to become a hermit. You have that thing inside of you. You're just not going to move anymore. You still need a city. Just maybe a wider, quieter city where you can maybe have a house for once and be away from the noise and from the stress. So LA it was. We did all the things with my new boyfriend and we lived the dream. And very soon I bought a house, I bought a car, I settled and it didn't take long before we broke up. It was very funny, this LA dream. I think one of the most symbolic thing is that I had dreamed of myself as this surfer, cool LA girl. And I had tried to be it so much. My boyfriend was this Floridian surfer and he would be like, okay, come on, let's go now. And it took me about a year, a year and a half to realize this is just not for me. I'll never be a good surfer. I'll never actually really love doing that. I like the idea of doing it. But I think at heart, this wasn't who I was. It was a big disappointment for him. And I think it was the first thing that unraveled our relationship. It was this kind of masks of who we had dreamt to be that were falling. So we broke up and I stayed in the house and here I was on my own, heartbroken, but also very happy to finally have time just for me. I actually really needed it. There was the weight of my life in New York. There was the weight of that relationship that had been quite dysfunctional since the beginning, which is not surprising seeing how I met him when I was at my lowest at the end of my life in New York. And suddenly I had this new, beautiful home. I had my little dog. 
I had hours for myself and I started sleeping and taking care of myself, enjoying loneliness, enjoying spaciousness and finding new ways to myself. I enjoyed LA for everything it had to offer. All the healing and the gurus and all the yoga and took care of my body for the first time. Went quite deep in therapy and started slowly understanding what had happened to me over all these crazy years in New York, over all my life, all the story that I just told you. What was driving me? Why was I running like that? And suddenly just silence and calm. I had let go of photography and I had also slowly let go of my writing. I wasn't writing so much for the blog anymore. The team had taken over. The project had shape shifted into something completely different from which I was feeling quite separate, I have to say. Social media had taken over and I didn't know what to do with it. It wasn't a medium that was as easy for me. And over the years, the focus had changed. It had gone from me taking photos of others and showing their beauty and their grace to having to turn that lens towards myself because that's what you do on social media. And as much as part of me, my ego, my need for recognition, my vanity loved it, there was a part of me that never felt at ease with that. I think it's maybe a generational thing, maybe a personality thing. I don't know, but I never really found my voice on social media. And I tried so much because I wanted it. I wanted to keep that momentum that I had. But it was very disappointing and kind of broke all my attempts because people were now on Instagram Everybody was taking beautiful photos very suddenly. All the tools had changed. It was very difficult to differentiate yourself. We all started living in this fake, curated world, extra edited. I even tried to write for Instagram at some point, telling myself, well, if you've done blogging, you can do, mi you can do micro blogging. Without realizing that I couldn't, these short, texts weren't showing all the subtleties of the emotions and the situations that I was describing and that really I was betraying my creativity. It took me a while to understand that. Illustrations don't do as well on Instagram and I felt a sort of disconnect with my own creativity and I didn't know where I could have it live. I also think I just needed a rest. But it was very difficult. Every day I was like, what are you doing? You're doing nothing. What's happening? I kept working for a while. There had been so much noise around me that even without being this creative powerhouse, people still wanted to hear what I had to say. I also had an agent who created a whole story about my house. And so it was in magazines and Again, from the outside, maybe everything still seemed fine, but when my house was on the cover of Domino, I know that I hadn't produced anything of interest creatively for probably a few years. Some things here and there, but definitely not to the point where I was five years before, ten years before, where every day a new idea was coming up, where every day... I would have a new idea, a new photo, a new text, and where I could feel that I was really imprinting the culture of my time. These days, they were over. Slowly, I abandoned my old self, leaving it in New York where it belonged. I also abandoned my team, which I still feel horrible about, but good stories are honest ones, aren't they? I did. I built this team, I let them take over, and I literally left. I left Emily in New York, trying to manage all that the business was. And I want to say this studio was really a co-creation. 
there always was real honesty with Emily. I felt like I had abandoned her, but I think she always knew. And she was never mad at me, maybe probably sometimes frustrated. That's also when I realized that the studio actually needed me because work started becoming difficult. Times were changing. Blogs and online publications had taken a whole new direction. Blogs that had started at the same time as I did had become huge publications. Refinery29 is a good example. Who, what, where. All these places had really taken it to the next level. We had never wanted to be that because we still had this attitude. We didn't want to fall into the hamster wheel of having to satisfy advertisers, of posting 500 times a day. I remember at some point that Refinery29, my friends there, told me, oh, yeah, I think we post 300 posts a day. And I never wanted to do that. I wanted to be small, to be like an independent magazine, like those magazines I had so loved. I never could have become such an industry, but I was looking at it and I was like, times are changing. And if you're going to be small, the spirit of the founder needs to be very present. The sense of taste, the sense of humor, the vision, you can't just disappear and leave it to young journalists that are not exactly sure what they're talking about. That was a huge mistake on my end. Even though it was keeping going, I understand it felt disincarnated to my audience, who slowly had lost me. The same way I was losing myself, but how could they know that? By that time, I wasn't writing anymore. I lost touch with my team. I lost touch with my audience. I had developed this huge audience on Instagram from launching my book, from being at fashion shows, and from all the things that I had been known for before. But the nature of audiences on Instagram was so different from the ones that we had on blogs, which felt like we knew them, like they were friends. We could feel so much support on our blogs. Instagram was so difficult. You would get terrible, mean comments and you would feel like, why are these people even following me? And it would make you feel scared of saying anything of being anything, of challenging anything. It was so difficult to be creative. Everything started looking the same. Our photos were the same. Our outfits were the same. What we were eating was the same. Because there was so much fear to be true to oneself. And I fell into that trap completely. I got paralyzed. I've been paralyzed on Instagram for many years because it was so difficult to be just me. Because also, there can't be subtlety when you're writing, when you're taking photos, because all has to go through an algorithm. It's hard to have a sense of humor, and it's much easier to make mistakes. So I lost touch with my team, I lost touch with my audience, and I lost touch with my creativity. And there was nothing left. And in so many ways, my life in LA was so lovely and bright, and I didn't push myself to do anything. I knew how much I needed this moment of nothingness. I enjoyed it. I wasn't traveling at all anymore. I wasn't working much. There was just time, space, and solitude, and a lot of beauty. Until one day, I found myself on my sofa, not knowing what to do, literally looking at my feet. And I realized, shit, I am bored. I'm bored. Get me out of here. I'm bored. Boredom is interesting because it says something. It says, okay, there is space in your life now. What are you going to do with it? Boredom is the sign that you've done the work, whatever you needed to do. In my case, it was the healing, the resting, the feeling better, the breaking up with my old self. 
that was done. But now, there was nothing. I think it was the moment when Emily, my business partner, and I decided to go to a silent retreat together. Today for me was a place and time when I really got in touch with my spirituality. I was looking for myself in different places. So when we talked about it, I was like, this is a great idea. Let's just do it. Silent retreats are supposed to be a moment where you have a lot of revelations about yourself. And I was on a constant quest to know who I was, who was that new person. Because letting go of the old one didn't mean at all I knew who the new one was going to be. Was I going to be this very spiritual L.A. woman? Was I going to be an influencer, traveling the world, starting over again? What was I going to be? We went there. It was in San Francisco. I remember driving out there and being so hopeful. It was the summer of 2019. It was a six-day retreat. And for six days, we shared a room and we didn't speak. Nothing. Just meditate all day. Oh, I hated it. Emily loved it. It was agonizing for me. I love talking. I have a podcast where I talk on my own for hours. I love communication. I love looking at people. At a silent retreat, you're not supposed to look at people in the eyes. When they walk by you, you have to look down. It's all about this sense of isolation. I did it. I was trying to talk to Emily in the evenings and she wouldn't even respond. We were laughing about it, but this was hard for me, really hard. When we left, I took my car, drove back to LA and her parents came to pick her up. So we didn't have time to exchange our views about the week we had just spent together in silence and in meditation. So I called her on the way back and we had this very long, deep talk, and we cried a lot, and we laughed a lot, and at some point, we decided we're going to close down Atelier Doré, our publication, this thing we had grown for so many years that had brought us so much joy and so much pain. We were at the end of that road. What a beautiful phone call. There was pain and there was also so much relief. My head wasn't in it anymore. And when that happens, it feels like you're just dragging something that's weighing you down for no reason. The only reason had become itself, meaning it existing to pay for itself. It was a terrible hamster wheel we had put ourselves into and I wasn't interested anymore. Emily was exhausted, but we loved our team and we decided to do that really slowly over months, start letting go of people and giving them time to find something else. And we would sublet our big studio in New York and just give ourselves time to figure out what we would do next. There was also a sense of after almost 10 years that Emily and I might not be working together in the future. And there was a sense of mourning over our relationship, even though we would be friends forever. Working with someone for so many years is something really special. You talk with them every day. I love these moments the same way I had loved deciding I wasn't going to work for Vogue. These moments of sadness and relief. These moments when we make the right decision and we know it deep down in our gut. So now there I was. What I had built in New York was about to close down. I hadn't created anything for months. I was single and I had no idea where I was going. It's interesting that the pandemic came a few months later. By that time, I was clearly bored. I could feel it. I needed to find something to do. What's interesting is when things started closing down, Emily and I realized we were in a great position compared to many 
other companies. We had only left a skeleton of what we were. We had no employees left, only a couple of freelancers. We had just sublet our very expensive studio and we were quite free. What's interesting is that I had dropped my agent after arriving in Los Angeles because of all those changes that I wanted to do. And after I encountered boredom, I got another agent and we had started to go back into all the things that I didn't want to do anymore. I was starting to book influencer jobs again, many, many of them. I was going to need to travel. And I think that unconsciously my fear just had drove me back to what I didn't want anymore. You know those traps in life, how they happen? You're like, well, 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 I I don't know what to do. I'm bored. I'm going to need money very soon. I can't keep going like that. Let's just go back to what we know. And that's what I had done. And the wonderful thing is that what happened in 2020 shut this down. All the new jobs I had booked were canceled. The new agent that I had found closed down. My studio was closed and there was nothing. I was in Los Angeles. I could feel that the lockdowns were going to come. And I realized something that I hadn't admitted to myself for months. I realized how far I was from my family, from my culture, from everything that I knew. Basically, I realized how far I had gone and maybe, maybe this time it was too far. I had to ask myself the question, if these lockdown lasts for months, for years, what do I want to do? Do I really want to be here alone in my beautiful house with my dog? Do I want to go back to my family? I felt very isolated and I think this is also a moment when I touched the bottom of solitude. And as much as I enjoy the gifts of solitude, I think at this moment, I also felt that pushed too far could be a way to deep unhappiness for me. That life was really all about balance and that I needed people around me and that I couldn't do this on my own. I was dating at that time and I'll tell you more about it at a different time because dating in LA was ridiculous. And in January of 2020, I had met someone and he lived in New Zealand. And we really, something really clicked the day I met him. There was something very strong in our relationship. And he came to see me in February. And I think that the lockdowns came by March. And I knew I needed to go somewhere. And it was going to be either Corsica back to where I came from, or it was going to be New Zealand, further than I had ever been. And my taste for adventure took over, and I took the last flight to New Zealand and landed there, and that's when the country closed. Sharing a life with someone new and their kids when you barely know them is an absolutely crazy and fascinating thing to do. I wouldn't say it was easy, but there was something wonderful and something strong and and also a way of going straight into the difficultness of what a relationship is, being stuck at home right away, that if you can make that, you can make it through anything. So that was going on in the background and I felt like I had lost all the space that I had created in my life in LA. The wideness of the city, the horizon of the ocean, the spaciousness and brightness of my house, the long hours on my own. Suddenly this was over. There was the horizon, but now I was in a home without even a room for myself. And again, there was the noise, the kids, the man, the things to do. And life had started again. 
And that's when I felt I need to write again. I think maybe then writing is a way to create space in my life. If there is busyness around me, this gives me peace. There must be something like that. I started writing and I know one thing for sure is that if I create something, I need it to be for others. If I write, I need readers. And so I just decided to publish a newsletter. This newsletter needed a visual aspect, so I started drawing again. My writing in the beginning was going all over the place. I completely lost my voice and I didn't know how to find it. And I also wanted to talk from the new place in my life where I was. Oh, it was so messy, but it was also so joyful for me. What a dream. I remember finding myself a little corner in my boyfriend's house and putting the sound of rain to isolate myself from all the noise of the kids that weren't going to school and that were playing around. There was something quite amazing going on. I announced my newsletter on my Instagram and started getting a lot of subscribers. It was, oh my God, I almost want to cry when I say that, but a lot of people writing me and saying, oh, you're back, we missed you. And I could not believe how wonderful this made me feel because I was feeling the same. I told you about the profound bond that I have with my readers. And suddenly this was back and something that was so precious to me that I had betrayed and abandoned. It was there. Nobody was mad at me. Everybody was supportive. I felt carried by the love that I received. The newsletter started growing, but the number of subscribers started growing so fast that the panic that I felt on Instagram came back to me and I got scared. I had always had this very, I had always had this way of writing that's so open, so honest, and it was very difficult for me to do anything else than that. That's the way I know, that's the only way for me. But now audiences had changed and I wanted to allow myself the freedom to write anything I wanted. And that's how I thought long and hard. And one day, after maybe three or four months of writing this newsletter for free and seeing it grow too much and too fast, I decided to close it down and make it a paid subscription because I wanted the people who would read me to feel committed and to create a sense of trust. It also was a wonderful way for me to look at the future and think, if I do that that way, I'll never have to go back to advertisers and all the things and the mistakes and the lifestyle that I had had before. There was something there that was really important for me to preserve this sense of peace that I had created in my life. I had found my way back, not only to my creativity, which was probably one of the most joyful moments of my entire life. It was also the most real because I now knew who I was, what I wanted, what I didn't want. I knew the traps. I had experience and maturity. It also was what finally made me understood that this little talent that I had always overlooked, that I had never dared look in the eyes, whether it was because I thought I wasn't good enough, because it was too pretentious, whether it was because of fear, this talent was the most important in my life. Not photography, not illustration, as much as I adore these mediums. Writing was my joy, my raison d'être, and my way to connect with the world. I had finally found my way. 
and it was so clear and so profound and so deep inside of me that that is the force that's guiding me now. Not being famous, not being an influencer, not having my face in magazines, no, nothing like that. I just want to become a great writer. It turned out my boyfriend was living in New Zealand, but he was Scottish and he was working a lot in the UK. I'd never had much of a relationship with Britain. I know London felt beautiful, but gigantic and rainy. And that's basically all I knew. I had these dreams of Scotland because everybody knows how beautiful it is. But that's all I had. But we started traveling together there. By then I had rented my house in LA, slowly moving out without even knowing really what I was doing just following my heart and following my gut. And there was this sense of, what are we going to do? Where are we going to be? We both knew that we needed to establish ourselves somewhere and New Zealand was definitely too far from my family. I had known that since I had finally understood that in LA. I couldn't be so far. France was difficult because my boyfriend didn't speak French and he didn't work there. So London, that city that I had never really loved, that place of which I had always said, oh, I can't live in London, it's too big, it's too brainy, it's too dark, suddenly became the main idea. And a year and a half ago, we settled there and I brought my dog in our new home. And now I'm talking to you from my desk overlooking the park and I'm loving this new life. I love the energy of the city and the beauty of it, the beautiful countryside and all the newness and the excitement and I always say to people who say oh you finally found your place I'm like don't go too fast you know me this is just the beginning but the truth is I feel inspired I feel driven and happy and in touch with a new sense of beauty and creativity and a new sense of a direction. That same love that I felt when I moved to New York and I had this new career that was so exciting that it was carrying me through. The same love, but with a sense of maturity, a sense of self, a sense of my limits, a sense of what I want, of what I can do and what I can't, and of when I will need to say no. I think getting to know yourself is the story of a lifetime, and we're trying to race to the arrival, but there is no arrival. It just unfolds slowly, and we have to let life take us to unexpected places. I'm done trying to control my future. I just know what I love to do, and I try to do it every day. I know what I need and it's connecting with you through my words. I know I need calm and I can't spend my time traveling around the world. I would never have thought that I would one day speak to you from frosty London. But here I am. Thank you so much for following my story. Thank you for listening. This was the last installment. And after that, I'm very excited to start talking about a lot of different things. My favorite subject is dating and love. I love anything that has to do with health and beauty. We're going to talk about all of that in the future episodes of this podcast. Sometimes I'll bring a friend or somebody that has a great story to tell us, but most times, exactly the way my newsletter is made. It will be just me here talking to you and sending you these messages. Thank you for listening. Sending you love. Le Rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré. Minimize bathroom time and maximize outdoor time with our super simple routine of Made in France skincare. Use code PODCAST10 for 10% off your first order.
Thank you for listening to Le Rendez-vous. If you want to know more about me, find out about my newsletter and my community. Find me on Instagram at Garance or at my website at garance.world. And well, if you'd like to find out how to spell that crazy name, just check out the show notes. Until next time, sending you love.